and gentlemen, boys and girls, complexity welcome back to complex. Star Ladder North American Playoffs. It's Complexity gaming up against Archon Dota. Game two, we saw Complexity take a very convincing, uh, I think that the final score ended up being two to 33. Uh, so that was a pretty solid little uh, pick up there for them as they ended up winning that one. What are your thoughts for this next game here, Llama Down Under, the person who's going to be casting this wonderful game with me? I, I obviously the IO ban out makes a lot of sense for Archon. It also just feels like uh, maybe they were a bit out of sorts with that. I think it's a great time to experiment though. This is the winner's bracket. Uh, you can drop a game and play it up against DC. And it's something where if you're going to try things out, try it out here when you have a chance. But either way, they go with something safe like the slaughter. And I would love to see something innovative like the ET. I really don't think it was all on the ET. It just felt like after that initial snowball from Complexity, Ember just couldn't find farm anymore. It showed off to me the power of IO and that hero's ability to be effective without Ten necessarily needing to have a ton of relocate ganks. There was, I think, one potentially up Five in the top lane, I want to say, remain. where they took on out the Ember, which was really key to shutting down his farm. But they didn't need that. They were able to sort of translate the early kills that they ended up having by other heroes roaming around into being able to force a slow siege onto high ground. And to me, that was really, I think, it was in the seat of the limp on that Shadow Fiend who uh, was able to really show off his stuff. And with the Dazzle picked up here, I wouldn't be surprised to see Complexity go back to the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, it's interesting. The Dazzle so early, always a really... Obviously a really strong hero, but we've been seeing a couple other heroes take his place. But now he's there. It does mean that complexity... You said Shadow Fiend sounds good. Of course, it's a Dio Shadow Fiend. I think you can have the same amount of utility, and there it goes. Limp clearly very comfortable on this hero. Um, as is Chessie, though, so <laughs> who knows exactly who will be playing it. Now, Archon, they can try to... I mean, they've got... Okay. I was going to say they can try to pick up something that deals with Shadow Fiend well mid... Maybe something which Slaughter can help capitalize on, but an Alchemist, kind of like a Minus on the strat, right? A little bit. I, I think also yesterday we saw Mu run the Alchemist two separate games in a row, able to 2 -0 Elite Wolves with it. And to me, this is their comfort pick. This is the one that they Complexity like to go to. And to the draft, his... His skill build really can be formatted to whatever type of pressure he's receiving in lane, and it kind of doesn't matter to him. This is really, I think, the beauty of this hero. Uh, beauty, I say, as I sort of gag myself because it's honestly so frustrating to play against in pubs. He did end up going for one build yesterday where he went max greed, wasn't feeling a ton of pressure, and was able to outfarm his opponents. The second build he ended up going maxing stun after just taking one level in greed until I think level 12 was the next time he ended up getting another point in greed. And the hero can just be a menace in the early stages. We saw it, uh, Frankfurt also, going for that early medallion into Solar Crest, and then you combo in with all of the damage that Alchemist Radiant can deal out at the early stages of the game, and it's just terrifying. Yeah. Now, something interesting, I don't think they have space for it, but Alcon is one of the few teams on this patch who've been running quite a bit of Magnus. It's... I don't know whether they'd be able to find a place with it here, but I've always wanted to see a Magnus Alk combination. Of course, oh, you God. can put that uh, cleave on the Alk who attacks like a truck, or tracks like a machine gun. Sorry, wrong uh, analogy. <laughs> uh, in that chemical rage. Probably won't be something we see. Additionally, I want to point out Alk on here, they ban out the bounty hunter, so this is clearly a hero they really prioritize there. Thinking about the last game, I feel like it was the Ember and the Bounty, maybe, who didn't have great impact. They were what felt underwhelming. Obviously, Ember had trouble finding farm, but also the Bounty. He was level 5, I think we called it 16 minutes in. The lack of track kills, partly because of the lack of kills, really rough. Well, and that's the problem that you end up facing as a Bounty Hunter, is that your lanes are, just by their very nature, a little bit more weak and so you need to be able to supplement that by either bad. picking other strong laning heroes or heroes that are able to get their farm independent from uh whatever else is going on you don't necessarily need to be able to shut down the other opponent uh off laner or safe laner or whatever you know, you, one of the heroes that i think about here is sometimes a offlane queen of pain who can usually get the levels without too much of a problem and so Five i think that if you're going to run a bounty hunter strat you need to be able to be self serving and okay in your lanes regardless of it and i just don't think that um the combination of the the ember spirit and the elder titan were able to make that happen for them it but was... this time around it's also going to be lich band out and the huskar so trying to keep away from the cheese archon feel comfortable going into this draft 
I actually really like that, um, unlike the set earlier today, they recognize that the Huska needs to go for Archon, don't want to play that into the Dazzle, and now Complexity getting rid of the Bane. Another strong controlling support, and we've discussed this, if you're a Shadow Fiend and you have to play up against their mid plus a Bane, it might be an Alchemist, but that Bane is going to zone you from that Alk, and then the Alk's going to get off to such a great start. So Complexity making sure that their yes, Alk can get off yeah. better, but they can still pick up the Wyvern on Alkon and do a similar thing with that level 1 Arctic Bone. So it looks to me the way that Complexity are trying to deal with the Alchemist, as you mentioned, is go for maybe an early rotation on into the mid lane with Tusk. Already Dazzle's going to be there, and try and catch him with some shards as well as a snowball and then maybe following that up with a few raises. The thing I'm somewhat concerned about is that I think Alchemist can play pretty remain. far back in this lane, and as long as the supports for Archon Five are relatively okay at you know being able to roam around the map and, and keep an eye on that mid lane, get them off to a Reserve decent start, time. I don't know if they're going to be able to burst down that Alk. It's going to take at least two raises as well as uh, a snowball and some ice shards, followed up with a couple of right clicks to get a kill on that Alk in the mid lane, I think. He is actually a really squishy hero. He's one of those heroes which doesn't have a lot of good stat growth just because he has Grievous Greed. He's expected to tank up with items. But yeah, if you catch him before he's got the Chemical Rage off, sometimes you can get a quite easy kill. If the Chemical Rage is going, as you said, if you've used your spells, right-clicking him down doesn't become the easiest thing. So Complexity, whoever's on this Tusk, most likely Z Freak, because I've seen him play an amazing Tusk. Um, it could also be Swindles, but I don't think he has games on the Tusk. I'll double check. It's going to be a matter of did you land the ice shards and completely block him off? And maybe ideally block him in his own, in the opponent's, in your creeps so that he takes extra damage. Hmm. Shadow Demon now. Another defensive support. This is going to mean that it is probably going to be a Swindles Tusk. And, huh. I, unless they end up rotating Swindles into the top lane and then have, like, Chessy play the Tusk, which sometimes does end up happening as well. The Shadow Demon is one that I'm a little bit confused about. What's going to be that actual time for Requiem of Souls? The cast delay is 1.67, so maybe we end up seeing a Shadow Fiend go for a Blink Dagger, and then you start roaming around with the Shadow Demon and Shadow Fiend uh, going for those pickoffs with, with the Requiem once he gets level 11 or so on that Alchemist. That's an interesting way to deal with them as well. What do you... I don't know. Maybe That doesn't have to be what they do. I think also potentially a response to the Earthshaker, trying to say maybe I'll be able to save someone. The cost point on Disruption, oh, it's quick, although I don't know if it's quick enough. Radiant team I back. also think maybe just a little bit of something for the Dazzle Heal Bomb. Of course, making more illusions into an Earthshaker is always potentially a dangerous game. If you can disrupt his blink, that's great. If you you know, disrupt one of your heroes to save them, then Earthshaker blinks in an Echo Slam, not so good. But early game, maybe it's just going to be like you disrupt, Tusk throws out ice shards because it's easy positioning and then Dazzle heal bombs them because you're all standing there. Yeah, that could definitely be. And if they wanted to go Reserve something like time. maybe a bit of a aggro tri lane, they could do that. Of course, Shadow Fiend's going to need some help in lane, I think. The thing that I just find weird about it is that, you know, the two ways that I think you play Shadow Demon... At least disruption seems to me one of the strongest abilities he's got. Obviously, you've also got you know shadow poison. You've got the purge ability, which is going to be great to be able to keep alchemist under control in terms of his movement. But uh, again, you kind of have to think about it in terms of setting something up because dazzle already has a grave to keep somebody alive. I just I, I'm a little bit curious what their last pick is going to be, and they end up going for the Luna. Radiant team. Very interesting. Yeah, I agree. I'm not. I'm not sure what's the exact plan here. Uh, Shadow Demon, you know, he creates the illusions. It's it's like a really short mortar for the Luna early pushing power. I um, either way, he can be really strong in lane and should be able to give the Luna a lot of farm. And a lot of folks, I saw this the other day, uh, in one of the EU Ten games, seconds, Shadow Poison. A lot of people underestimate it. Shadow Demon hasn't been particularly played in Professional for a while as much now, except sometimes as a counter to Anti-Mage, and if you take five of those stacks, you're dead. Yeah. A lot of the time. So it could be for that. And J.O., Queen of Pain. Oh. Very interesting. Safe lane, Queen of Pain coming out. This is going to be monkeys on the slaughter then. I'm sure that there's something else, and it's an interaction that we're going to see in the middle of a game that we just hadn't thought about, but uh, could be pretty cool there. It also is a nice little bubble to keep alive that Shadow Fiend if the Grave doesn't end up giving him everything that he needs. So overall, a pretty versatile hero. Okay. This Tusk, 
If it's going to be Swindles, it will be his second professional Tusk game ever. And yeah, that he he has one loss. So he could make his uh, win rate 50%. <laughs> That's the best that you, the, 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 um hopefully going to be able to make that happen. You don't want to end up going 0-2 on a Tusk. It's like one of the best heroes in the game. But I guess it's also one of those that you need to be able to know it pretty well to play it pretty effectively so we do i'm assuming the immediate tp on out as z freak actually drops yeah, the courier okay. out near the tier one in the mid lane as and he's going to be placing on down this observer ward to get some early vision no problem at all chessy moving out towards this top lane he's going to be playing on the luna for complexity we do have limp on the shadow fiend he ended up showing us a great one in the last game hoping to see a similar type of thing this time around swindles second tusk ever in professional dota and hand skin on the shadow demon yeah, and then for Alcon with their really fly banners, I really like the like white banners. It looks very slick. They've got Earthshaker being played by Fluff and Stuff. Wyvern is going to be played by Whitebeard. Queen of Pain on Jo. Moo playing that Alk, and then Monkeys Forever on the Slaughter. I also want to say this ward really nice. You know, that's exactly where you expect the Earthshaker to either be running by this seconds. area to get a fissure from this side. You generally don't expect him to come from that direction. So this is going to see all of those rotations. And since they didn't see anybody <laughs> um, coming out yet, they're going to maybe not have an idea of it until the first few ganks fail. <laughs> nice little... Uh, a little shout out there as well. We do end up seeing the GLHF end up popping out here. A big fight starting out. That's going to be oh. a disruption. Oh, God. They caught them all up in there. Fissure comes on out to try and save their life, but a nice little crush there on top of Monkeys Forever as well. A really good complexion. Or tossing out those raises. And they're able to get the bounty rune on the Shadow Fiend. We do end Nobody up seeing the, the bottom. run down to the bottom lane. It's still there. So uh, Moo's going to be able to get it. Yeah, and as you point, like, it, the heal bomb was pretty good there already. They got a lot of damage. Unfortunately, there is still going to be a bounty rune for this Alk. If Alk actually doesn't get a bounty rune at the beginning of the game, it's very difficult for him to come back because it puts him so far behind on the bottom. But in this case, he's going to get it. And another fissure. This means fluff and stuff. He's going to be very low on mono regen. So he might not be able to have the game impact he wants. I mean, it did end up bringing down uh, Mu as well, fairly low on this Alk, and he did end up missing the first set of waves as well. Definitely more important to be able to pick on up that early bounty rune, and at least for a second here, he's going to be uh, not quite able to pick on up his bottle yet. Did he actually... He had to bring a salve out to himself, so does end up having to commit that first couple of gold to that, and is going to be at least 20 more seconds yeah, before yeah. he ends up picking up his bottle. That's why he didn't, because normally the build on Alk is you go for the early rune, you immediately buy the bottle, it just gives you so much freedom in the lane to spam that acid spray, etc. And then also go jungle, you know, pick up more runes. But he needed the salve, because otherwise he's just going to lose this lane to the Shadow Fiend, and it's rough. Um, either way, Limp is also low. The Arctic Bone came in, as we said, he... Only has two souls, but he should be able to change that up right quick. But Acid Spray, not... I mean, nobody likes playing into that. Yeah, definitely. Fluff and Stuff moving in on the backside. They do have a Fissure up if they want to commit it. End up catching in hand skin. Nicely done there. Yeah. Looks like they're going to be able to get a quick kill here. One last hit for the Alchemist. First blood for him, as well as a nice little chunk of change. Being able to pick on up another Greeble's Greed kill. Now, something that I think may be part of the reason for the Shadow Demon, or just a nice interaction, you're expecting the Alchemist to go for a Radiance, and of course that does give a mischance based on the aura, so it could be that they're saying, hey, he's going to have this, why don't we just get an easy way to get one for ourselves, even if it's just for 8 seconds, that's almost the duration of a team fight, with how long those illusions last at la max level. But it really could just have been they decided that he's a good hero for zoning in the mid, maybe, and that's what they want instead. Yeah, and I guess the other thing is we do end up seeing another little fight up here. Z-Freak up against J.O. Fluffing stuff in the area. Also trying to tango dodge through the jungle. He is going to finally go down. This Queen of Pain just yells something right on over in his ear. And Alchemist is going to be able to pick on up himself uh, a haste rune, unfortunately. Not going to be the bounty this time. Limp dropping a little bit low. Trying to jump on in here. They are going to be able to get the stun down on top of him. And that's another kill. Alchemist with that haste rune able to find that kill. This game already infinitely faster than the previous one. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned. While the first game, you know, complexity started to snowball, Archon is having a really good start. And it's one of those things where it's really hard when you just look at CS to see how good this has been going. Alk has two kills. He's an Alk. <laughs> He's, you know, we're, we're three minutes in and he is a thousand gold ahead of anybody else. He is over a thousand gold ahead of the opposing mid. Yeah. 
he is going to be able to pick on up the treads right away. So three minute treads. He didn't end up getting the second bounty rune, but has gotten a kill, as you talked about, two kills, and I'm um, going to be able to keep on getting the CS pretty effectively. I think, though, that now that you're seeing him go for that early point in the stun, I want to see if he goes back for a second point in greed, or if he's going to try and go a bit more into the fighty style that we saw in the last game. Yeah, and we've seen a couple of different outfields be popular. Of course, I think the mages, um, the miracle beating up Ortizi is the famous example there. That's the kind of the fighting elk. The only, there are different, definitely differences. There's the poor man's Naga Siren, which is the Octarine Radiance, and that one it does feel like you really can't always sustain in the fight. You play that one by being super far ahead, and you just eventually burn them down and actually limp. He needs TP support. Here comes the Shadow Demon. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. They're just going to keep chasing him. The Disruption going to save Limp's life, and now he's going to go for a raise, but the Splinter Blast, I don't think it's enough to take him out, and he is going to be A-OK. -okay. But yeah, I wonder whether this is going to be the Bash Brothers Elk or the Naga Siren Elk. I feel like based off of the way that I saw him play yesterday, he ended up going for the Medallion Solar Crest each time. So to me, that seems to be his comfort zone. He ends up getting another Bounty Rune here. On top of being able to have Treads, Quelling Blade, and the Stout Shield and Bottle, he's probably going to be building into that next, I would imagine. It, I mean, obviously, you can play it however you feel like the game is going, and they are a little bit ahead, but I, I don't know if they need to do it. I mean, he's almost double the net worth of the Shadow Fiend right now. Like, they are in such a comfortable spot. <laughs> exactly, and... Shadow Fiend having a really rough time. We hadn't talked about it, but of course, he dying reduces his souls. He has to work to get that back up. It's it's not great. And also, Chessie, while Chessie is farming decently in top lane, um, his CS isn't bad by any means, but there's a lot of pressure up here. All right, well, DD up on J.O. Just looking for an opportunity to jump on in here with Fluff and Stuff nearby. Level 3, two points in the Fissure. As soon as Queen of Pain ends up getting this level 5, she really does become that much more deadly. And pings on out on top of Z-Freak. They are going to be able to hit the Fissure. One right click, maybe a second. Not going to be able to get it as the Lucent Beam is going to keep him back. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Swindle's getting chased on down by Monkeys Forever. Oh, the Bash! God, they end up getting the kill there. He did have Snowball and Shards. A little bit of a raffle. Um, occasionally that stuff does end up happening. <laughs> Yeah, there there is a lot of uh, Swindles is very new to the off lane, um, and it's something where he's uh, in the games I've called it. He's one of the most vocal people about wow, I did something really dumb. I'm gonna old chat about it, which is always makes for interesting Dota. So medallion actually. So this is gonna be Solar Crest first, Alk. I really thought since he had such a fantastic start, he was gonna contemplate just getting an early radiance. Um, always a nice item to have up, even if you're just doing it for that miss chance. But it's so much damage, especially on these squishy supports early on. Yeah, All right, and they're converging now on top of Fluff and stuff. He's gonna be okay though. Can just lay out that fissure if they do end up deciding to chase a little bit more. I I like the pickup for the medallion. Oh, Jo dropping a little bit low again. The Lucent Beam bringing him down. He did end up using a salve there to try and stay alive through the uh, the whole burst of damage that came out with the uh, hand skin disruption coming out. But I think that he can pretty much solo limp. Or maybe if you end up bringing on in the uh, the Earth Shaker as well, that that's all you're going to take to be able to get a kill. And this is going to be a kill on Swindles yet again. Look at all that damage that comes out. It's just so swift with the medallion. And it's a really nice way to play the Alchemist. You, of course, have, once you get the Solar Crest, there's Mischance on you. I think while there's quite a bit of magic damage fi flying around for complexity, you can find some of these supports. You can certainly find the Tusk and just kill him, uh, auto attack him down. So, really nice there. And it's the Minus Armor. Now, I think Limp, it probably, I mean, if the Tusk had a better start, maybe you could rely on the Tusk to go for the mech, but I think here it might be another Shadow Fiend has to pick that item up. And we do have a three-man smoke coming on in here. They're going to try and see if they can find this Alk, I would imagine. It doesn't seem like that's going to be super reliable. He's going to be moving on over to the hard camp, and they're pinging him out. So they're going to wrap around behind the Tier 1 tower. This is actually a solid initiation point. And with Winter Wyvern only level 4, I think that definitely the Winter Wyvern at least is in a little bit of trouble. They're jumping forward in on top of Limp. They end up getting the Cold Embrace onto Wipeyard, keeping him a little bit safe now. Z Freak separated from the rest of the herd. That's going to be a disruption down. They do have a heal bomb in a second. No, they don't actually. He's already dead. Fluff and Stuff came on in as well. That's going to be a kill on top of the Shadow Fiend. And just 
just like that, all their hopes and dreams are coming in. Nice little Sonic wave there, but the Eclipse is going to be enough damage to burn on through that Queen of Pain. Two heroes dead right now for Archon, able to get the Shallow Grave on top of the Snowball. Monkeys Forever getting chased forward, another nice of a crush, but Archon is going to just tear them all apart. And we do end up seeing Moose survive throughout all of it. Four heroes dead, only losing the Queen of Pain and the Winter Wyvern. Oh, man. So, mistake... Uh, a couple of misplays that, as you mentioned, they expended a lot to kind of, to kill the Wyvern, and it just put their positioning at odds. It's really difficult in Dota to fight under Tier 1 towers. It's super easy to TP to them. You can TP into the trees a lot, so maybe folks don't know. The Tier 2, especially in mid lane, is super close, so you can TP you know, as far, as far out on the Tier 2 as possible, and you're pretty much right up next to the Tier 1. And, of course, fighting under Acid Spray for so long, the Earthshaker just body blocked the SF and kept him in the acid. The other thing there is Tusk, when he did end up coming in there, didn't have level six, just now picking yeah. it up. So wasn't able to have that extra burst damage that comes out from Loris Punch. It feels to me like they didn't expect that to turn into as big of a team fight as it ended up being. And now we do end up having to jump on forward. Arctic Burn going to be committed onto Swindles. He's about to get hit with this Fissure and also do have the Queen of Pain in the area. This is definitely going to be a quickly dead Tusk. One last right click. Queen of Pain is actually going to yell at him and he ends up dying top lane. They are going to be able to get the Disruption down on top of the Slaughter. I think that he does end up falling there with the Lucent Beam finishing him off. Actually, it was Shadow Demon and the Shadow Poison killing him. Additionally, um... Eclipse at early levels is like really underwhelming because you only have five beams. It's just not If there are creeps around you're you're not getting anything now on saving grace despite all of this um, If we take the alchemist out of the equation, which of course isn't a very fair way to do it But it's hard to look at net worth growths and uh, Hero net worths when there's an alchemy game. He's way ahead, but of course this also skews the lead for Archon so Archon definitely ahead but not nearly as far as they look potentially. And if Complexity can hold this out, keep the Luna farming, because she's not farming awfully, they might be able to get some big items up on her. I think it's just a question of exactly how does she and the Shadow Fiend itemize to try to deal with this uh, Alchemist. Oh, Love and Stuff's just being a bit rude there, throwing out the fissure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I would tend to agree with you. The one thing that ends up changing this a little bit for the Alchemist is he actually, I mean, the fighting build... He's really kind of ready to, to party right now, and he is a pretty big element of their team fight. The fact that he has ended up going for those two points in the stun, only keeping one in the Greville's Greed, might even end up going into a Blink Dagger next. That's sometimes what we end up seeing from these Alchemists who end up going for more fighting styles. All of a sudden, he turns into Initiating Hero, and you can follow it up with an Earthshaker Fissure. I, I don't know. I think that Archon are in a really comfortable position, at least for the next, I want to say, five to seven minutes. Um, I don't really see Complexity able to take a solid fight off of them. Yeah, they definitely need an item or two. I feel like Limp, he's doing a good job now working towards that mech. He is... Uh, what's his farming status? Okay, his farm isn't even awful. Limp is over 400 GPM, considering everything that's going down in this game. We have action up top. Winter's Curse used on Chessie. The Shallow Grave comes out, and there's an Echo Slam by Fluff. She's going to be able to pop her ult, and she's being healed back up. The ult's over, though, now. Can they catch out Whitebeard? It looks like that's a yes, so he's going to be war punched to death. A nice turnaround for them. While not, you know, it's not killing the alchemist or anyone but you're happy for any kill there and a good gold swing although queen of pain thinking about killing off hand skin and if she finds him sonic wave it does manage to hit him and she gets the blink away so she's going to be just fine yeah and on the other side as well monkeys forever coming on in just to secure that kill if there was a chance for it chessie is over there in the um, top lane also a little bit vulnerable but with no blink dagger up on the starter as of yet uh, not going to be able to find that initiation. This has given a lot of room for Moo to be able to just continue to farm away 7,600 in terms of the net worth. And if you take a look at the team net worth graph, it's still hovering around that 4,000 mark and experience around the 500 as well. And now, like, I'm starting to look and I feel like the Blink Dagger is more and more just a solid item for Alchemist to pick up. It looks like Slaughter is about to be able to get his. Earthshaker also getting a little bit closer he ended up going for the arcanes first so it's going to be somewhat delayed and there yeah. it is picked up by Mui. he's going to start just roaming all around this map and finding kills yeah and it's really great there definitely used to be a very popular build on alchemist which was as you said it was blink dagger and abyssal blade so uh, i think this was before the solar crest existed i'm not 100 percent sure don't quote me on that one but it was just a really fun build where you 
play Alk, you press R, and then you blink in, you stun him with your unstable concoction, maybe then you stun him with your abyssal for funsies too. You keep bashing them because you've got chemical rage active and an abyssal blade. Either way, we're going to be seeing a Roshan going down, and since they do have the medallion on Handskin, which is actually pretty interesting, um, often you see it on the Dazzle instead, but Handskin has a little bit more form in this case, they're going to be able to sneak out this Roshan, so a really good job by Complexity here. And they need that, like, they need to be able to have any type of sustainability, and in the fights, if Shadow Fiend now ends up getting focused down, like, he's either going to be able to have the Aegis get popped and then he can come back with the mech, or if somebody else gets focused, he's going to make sure that he's able to get off his mechanism as well. So I, I think that this is sort of keeping a little bit of the pressure off, because probably Archon could have gone on in at any point and taken that Roshan, considering the map advantage that they've gotten, and a little bit unfortunate it didn't end up working out for them. Additionally, with a Slaughter and a Alchemist with a Solar Crest already, that is a very quick Roshan. I agree with you. Archon just, I think, trying to put pressure in places, especially after the fail gank top, maybe just calming down, saying, hey, let out get another item, be it that blink, and they miss out. And I don't know if he's going just for a Sanj and Yasha on the arc, but oh, do I hope it, that it's the Basher. I feel like that makes the most sense here. I, I, I really like that call. And he's maxed on out stun right now, so it does 360 at max damage. Uh, it's it's really significant, particularly because it's physical. So you're able to sort of double down upon the effectiveness of that with the solar cusp being placed, as well as the uh, minus armor that comes out from acid spray. Seven armor reduction at the, la at the level four, which is at where it's at right now. Also, you've got a Slaughter on your team, all of his spells being physical, and then of course his amplification of damage. You've got yourself a pretty good thing going there if you're this lineup of Archon, and now they're going in for the gank. Chessie is trying to be cute, seeing what he can find here on this Luna, but they know. They've seen it all on the lineup of Archon. This is a Monkey's Forever bait, and they're gonna go for it. Monkey's actually just blinks away into the tree line, but now here comes Fluff and stuff, and does he need- Oh, Echo Slam? He uses it. Chessie's gonna go down. Sonic Wave from J.O., and Monkey's Forever is like, I didn't even want- to Oh, never mind, he TP'd to the town get out of the trees i thought he was doing that i don't even want to be here i'm just gonna go farm bottom for efficiency yeah no he, he that was <laughs> just like completely totally uh devastation luna and the shadow demon call and that was one of the heroes that was really you know the sort of saving Radiant grace at this point tower. for complexity was the fact that chessy was getting so much farm on this luna i mean not crazy compare that to the, where the alchemist is at but compared to the queen of pain at least she was you know 600 gold ahead of her and now has dropped down a little bit more only being able to have that helm of the dominator and no stacks currently on their ancients as there uh haven't been able to be taken as of yet yes saving saving grace there but beautiful bait coming out and now chessie back up in this top lane if they do it just all over again this is going to be frustrating there is a blink ready to go on chessie and there it is one blink another blink oh fluff and stuff chessie is dead swindle comes in with the snowball but it is way too late and even though he has the sigil active he needs to get all the way out of there otherwise he is going to be in a lot of trouble didn't we just see that what the heck just happened there exactly um. it's one of those things where maybe you think hey i just i was just farming up here surely they're not going to come back but no such luck. And Limp is trying to pressure bottom as best he can. <laughs> Has a 16 minute clarity being put on him by one of the supports. But uh, Alk is getting ready. Yeah, he's going to jump on in here and can choose whoever he wants to. That's going to be a very dead dazzle. Ends up falling almost immediately. Nice little uh, ulti there coming out from Handskins, but it's not going to be enough. He ends up getting one, two shot. J.O. finding that one. And this is exactly what Archon did the other day. They just were able to find these kills constantly against Elite Wolves. And now jump on in after Limp as well. He ends up popping on out the uh, mechanism, but his Aegis already falling. I think that they have the answer now. That's going to be another crush down, and Limp is going to die twice. Yeah, this is really rough for... Oh, they actually get a kill elsewhere on Whitebeard in the mid lane. So Wyvern at least goes down there somewhere. But this game looking a bit like the reverse of the first one. They are pulling ahead on Archon. Actually, not as far ahead as I expected. Maybe the Groth just hasn't settled down yet. I was expecting... A 10,000 gold lead, but it's looking like it's just 7.5 thousand. Now, we haven't talked about Shadow Demon's toolkit yet. The Purge, of course, always really powerful, and it goes through BKB, so you can't really dodge it with that. At the same time, the hero's not really caring about it on all cards. Yeah. It does look like, instead, Alchemist has gone for Assange here, and it's kind of something that I wondered about is, 
just BKBs in general in this game is, are we going to end up seeing them? I think probably for Archon, eventually they're going to want to get them. But like you mentioned, the Shadow Demon Ultimate being able to go through it, you kind of need to be able to get it to deal with the Luna. But maybe if they're just able to sort of have enough regen to uh, survive throughout an Eclipse, it, it doesn't even matter. Um, mm -hmm. Doesn't quite have level two Eclipse, it's worth noting, Luna, as they end up going on into a four-man smoke potentially going to be able to find the Earthshaker, but I don't know. They're, it doesn't look like they're going to get anybody meaningful. Yeah, and for Alk right now, or just in general in Dota with this patch, Sondra Yosha is one of the best damage items for uh, carries, so that's what Alk is going to go. Sondra Yosha, good times. And uh, it does tank him up a little bit, and then as we talked about, uh, one, you can always get... We do, nobody mentions this. It's not a big deal, but you get maybe that lesser maim, right? And then people have to stay in your acid spray for a bit longer. It's not... It's not a big thing, but with how frequently Alk attacks, it's going to happen. And it's going to slow someone down, and you're going to get kills from it. Yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, if, like you said, as often as he attacks, you definitely want to be able to do that. But it's going to be able to get Swindle, maybe caught by this one. Snowball is turning on to Fluff and stuff, but Monkey's Fervor is going to have a stun in a second if he wants to use it. Nice Fissure, they're committed. They do have the rest of the Dire coming on in, but it looks like they're going to be able to find this kill before he gets on in there. Alchemist picks on up another Bounty Rune, because why not... This is just what he does at this point in time. Easy 435 gold, and they're waiting for them to move back up into the jungle, but they joke's know. on them. They're going straight on up here for the uh, the tier 2 tower instead in the mid lane. Yeah, and if they can trade this for the bottom tower, I think that's actually a win for complexity. That's something nice, but again, as you pointed out, I mean, Earthshaker had, I think it was 17 minutes at least uh, blink on that flop and stuff. That's really good. When you're playing uh, support Earthshaker or Flint, he's gonna get Echo Slam and see if Alk even bothers to throw his stun. He waits to get the minus armor and one more auto attack. Flop and stuff actually getting really low because of the Requiem of Souls. And of course, it's gonna stop that damage output. Now he's being coached up, slowed down. He doesn't have another Echo Slam, even through the Cold Embrace. This is just gonna set up for more. Oh, the ulti from the Eclipse from the sidelines. Jesse going in, Sonic Wave comes out, but it doesn't hit the Luna at all. Can she get enough damage out? But she's not hitting anyone. She slows down Jo, but Jo has enough to throw a blink and it's on cooldown. And I don't think they're getting anything else out of this, but yeah, they even get the return kill on the Shadow Demon, not going so well for them. And complexity, I don't know if they can take out monkeys forever at this point. <laughs> they're just so big. Like this is what we're talking about is that oftentimes when you think about an alchemist, people are really transfixed upon, I think, the idea of that, you know, that, all right, the hero doesn't do a lot in the late game. If we're just able to sort of sustain throughout it, it's going to be okay, which is true, but you also have the versatility of being able to go for this battle build. And I think it's why this hero is just so freaking good right now that he can do kind of whatever he wants. And he does have the ability to scale well into the late game. I, I don't know. I, I just feel like this, this pick has really worked out effectively for Archon. And um, if Complexity don't end up taking this game, which it's looking more and more like uh, Archon are in the driver's seat, they should probably at least think about banning out that Alchemist. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember back to the draft. I feel like the AA was banned. No, that Alk was picked second, right? He wasn't even yeah. second phase. He was picked first phase. So that point is moot. And as you said, it might be time to ban out the Alchemist or at least pick a lineup where you're feeling very confident. You might even have to go something cheesy like the Batrider or a Viper, you know, who's bound to win those matchups. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do that if you want to win the games. And yep, such is life. Now, Chessie working on a bkb i think straight away it makes a lot of sense here not sure if it's going to be too little too late could also be a sand and yasha a good item as we already spoke about for most carries Keo has his bkb so in the bkb wars at least archon is a little bit ahead let's take a look at net worth again it's shoving around that 12k mark after that engagement in the mid lane 7500 experience item wise big things that are coming up Earthshaker trying to get his four staff finished off as we mentioned the bkb on the queen of pain slardar already has the most mobility in the world puff and stuff is just behind enemy lines right now a little bit scared and I, I think AC, once that comes up, that's really sort of going to be the swan song for complexity once the alchemist gets that. And Fluff I is they getting ready to do a, that. He's getting ready to do another. They they came from out of space or they came from behind. Or I think if they went up a little bit, Fluff just does a casual like, oh, I was here all along. Let me kill all of you. But instead, we have action down bottom. It looks like the shallow grave comes out in time on Swindles. Is he going to go for a snowball or something? That is on cooldown. The Swindle Blast is still alive somehow. Can they stop Warus Punch and a disruption just in case the Warus Punch wasn't enough? They'll catch out Whitebeard. And again, at this point, any kill, a good kill for complexity. Except we've got Monkeys Forever. He's thinking 
about going in again, but instead just putting up that amp damage. Always great for vision. And I think he's just sort of trying to play this a bit oh, like they do with that She pumps the to... ult and now Moo is taking all of it in the mid lane. Holy cow, Chessy saving his life there because Moo would have just pounded away on you and actually the Eclipse still going. But Chessy needs some help. Lots of minus armor up on her. There's going to be a Fissure. Somebody needs to get over here and save that hero, but the blink away. And we've also got Swindles. He's in the Snowball. Monkey's forever attacking from the other side. I feel like Archon are on all sides of this fight. Swindles going to want to get on all the way away. Sonic Wave wipes them out as Swindle blinks into that. And now J.O. running around with his BKB. Z Freak is going to be the casualty there. Uh, maybe more. Actually, oh, gosh. Uh, he's definitely dead. They're going to be able to get the disruption over here as well. And it looks like Limp's going to end up falling. BKB or not, there's going to be the Requiem of Souls coming out. They are able to escape away from it. Chessie now dropping low, but I think that he's able to get out of there after we end up seeing the Luna pick on off the Slardar. They're still looking for more. Mu is just this unstoppable beast right now, but they're not going to be able to find any more kills as we do end up seeing the TPs out of there and everybody all fine and dandy. At the end of the day, though, relatively even and complexity lose two in that engagement. I actually was surprised that that didn't go worse for Complexity after the Fissure came out. I thought it was another great Fissure. Unfortunately, the Shadow Fiend, he got his BKB off just before the Echo Slam landed. And that, that saved the day. Because the Requiem of Souls, of course, reduces right-click damage. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a nice thing. Why were... Oh, okay, they're killing a tier one. They're going to be able to get that one off from his tens of in the last hit. Unfortunately, doesn't get extra gold from that, uh, but it's okay. He has enough gold as it is. That being said, Shadow Fiend is starting to catch up. I mean, <laughs> when I say catch up, he's still 5,000 gold behind the Alchemist, but it's not as bad as it was before, sort of. Uh, and looks like they're going to try and come on in here and take Roshan as well. It's also not nearly as bad as it looks. I really want to keep stressing this because against an Alk, you have to kind of rethink how you're looking at all the stats. This SF, despite being on a team that's 13 kills behind, he has 490 GPM right now. That's pretty good. That He's, he's doing okay. Limp is keeping up with things. I don't know whether it's enough to win this game, but he's not playing poorly by any means. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the thing is that you're... It, it's it's you need to sort of re think about the way that you end up looking at the opponent's gpm in terms of are they having a bad game or not but i still do think that all of that gold has been very effective for the alchemist he's getting a lot of value out of every single one of his items he's always being able to make that solar crest get good use he's able to take away the right click damage from the enemy carries because they're going to start being able to miss hits as well like, all of these items are super effective in terms of what they do, and pretty soon this AC coming up as well, they're going to start to be able to take down towers quickly. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't already doing that enough. I also have to say, these huge supports coming out for Archon, even the Wyvern, I mean, he's pretty poor, but approaching his... Oh, Whitebeard's pretty poor, approaching his Blink Dagger, and we see a jump in. There's going to be one stun, Swindle Melons. They actually don't commit the gank. He's got the Snowball fired off. It shouldn't... Oh, that was onto the Creep Wave, not onto one of the enemy heroes, and that should be the end of it, as in mid, we see Z-Freak TPing out, but he's not able to get it. The last tick of the Acid Spray. That was a really unfortunate play there for Complexity. Yeah. Like, they ended up getting the jump on the bottom tower, and at the same time, Alchemist jumped in oh. to try and mess with the Dazzle a little bit. Are they going to be able to actually find Jesse here? They end up getting the Fissure down one time. Echo Slam committed. Shadow Fiend now a little bit separate from the herd. They are going to be able to pop on off the ulti there, but they don't end up getting any kills from Jesse out of that, at least as of yet. There's the Winter's Curse on top of Limp, starting to burst through. Moo is going to town. He does end up continuing to survive through all of this with the Cold Embrace and everything else. He is still alive alive what are you alchemist and now also it looks like they're going to be able to finally take on out hand skin full team wipe everybody is dead and archon just sitting back smiling happy as clams moo how does he have that much regen it is not fair i think also a lot of the problem there being that the uh luna was cut off she popped her ult it's one of those panic things but the creep wave was coming so she didn't get much damage on those heroes she still had to get around to the fissure to do any sort of damage to move and then of course a beautiful winter's curse coming out of whitebeard so really well played there from the wyvern keeping people alive this game looking really rough for complexity here now both teams uh complexity out of smokes also out of smokes on the lineup of archon Obviously, Archon not feeling like they need it. They can go take these lost two tier twos probably easily. Um, but I'm not sure complexity, how they get back in this. They got to keep the Shadow Fiend farming. He's going to have a Sanj and Yasha coming in now. He went the BKB before it, which isn't a bad choice here at all. But it's worth noting, like, look at the vision right now that you end up seeing between the Dire and the Radiant. 
Like, Dyer do have a couple of wards in their own jungle, but it's still so scary for them to move out anywhere. And now Alchemist is going to start building into these really scary moments where he's going to start giving items to the rest of his team. He has his base core for everything that he wants. Probably going to be an Aghanim Scepter first going to that Queen of Pain, I'm almost positive. Uh, wouldn't necessarily be great to be able to head on over to that Earthshaker, but this is those moments where now your Queen of Pain who you know already up at 12k net worth is about to be on up to the 16k mark so really really scary moment yeah it's i, I don't know how when has alk already given one no, okay yeah he's given one he's being generous i'm actually a bit surprised because we see a lot of the battle alks we see a lot of alks these days not being super generous but jo he's big he's suddenly got a bunch more stats and as you said it's it's feeling rough Live, uh, complexity go for looking for someone in the jungle and it doesn't that uh, gank doesn't catch because nobody's here now they're at the tier threes pretty soon in a second or two archon are going to be perfectly happy to keep this push going yeah they're calling it out let's keep on going there i mean they still do have the glyph on up on this tier two tower so going to commit that one start to apply the damage here swindle's going to jump forward is going to be able to be pulled outside of his own base now is going to thankfully be able to blink out after that but they're going to find with the catch another couple of hits swindles is dropping low not going to be looking for it bkb is now popped for chessy as well i think that they try and disengage at this point but Moo is separated from the rest of his team but cold embrace look at the regen it's it's just so silly. He but doesn't even have his ulti off right now. Still, his positioning was awful there for a moment, and they're actually getting him pretty low. Another Ice Shell's gonna come out, doesn't quite block him in. And now it's Whitebeard who's in a spot of trouble, but there's the Sonic Wave coming out. They finally pop the Eclipse. Will it be enough? They've got heals and shallow graves, but I don't think so. Limpy's standing there in the BKB, able to get off the Requiem of Souls. Whitebeard is so low. Chessy, he's coming back in, saying that he wants more, but Jo he blinks away again at the last second, and it doesn't look like the poison managed to clip him. So many heroes on Archon, so low and they're just not able to make it happen for the lineup of complexity and i believe at least some buybacks were expended there luna didn't have to use hers Buyback but on the tusk uh, yeah uh, so the fight relatively even but key things that you ended up seeing in that one one bkb charge for the shadow fiend down to seven seconds bkb charge for the luna down to eight seconds um you had to have the buyback on the tusk slowing down his farm and you only ended up losing an Earthshaker for that also on top of that they got a no not that much damage on the tier three tower but it, it just feels to me like that fight despite the fact they didn't get the objectives of the objectives that they wanted they've shut down complexity's farm and really right now on this tusk all you have is a blink dagger and a magic wand he needs a bit more farm like he still can still do all the good tusk things that you would want but uh doesn't really have like that other initiation item or counter initiation item really I'm really unsure of the best way. It does feel like they have some decent high ground defense. I mean, they just showed there that if you're out of position a little bit, they can do quite a bit of work. And Dazzle also has the gem up. We're going to maybe get some D ward action, but oh goodness, they're running into way too many bad guys. And Swindles, you're just going to sacrifice him. Sonic Wave casually coming out. Limp, you need to walk away, but the Bash comes out. And he's trying to get out. He's popped the mech already, but now there's amp damage on him. There's a lot of other heroes. He just BKB TPs, but they commit the Winter's Curse for this. Where is the rest of his allies coming in? But now here comes the Bash Brother move. He is just going in. Requiem of Souls isn't going to save you. They even use the shallow grave for the freak trying to just tp out but limp is going down and that is uh death near so close to your tower this is an easy push coming out now luna luna is trying to push as fast as she can but she's also most likely going to take a tumble no tp probably not even going to bother to expend the bkb charge and she gets bashed i mean it's bad enough that you're dealing with an earth shaker who has like five seconds of lockdown if he so chooses but you also get the casual bash, bash from the slaughter 33 to 12 I mean, that's all you need to say at this point. 25,000 net worth lead in terms of experience that's shooting towards that 15k mark. This battle build by the Alchemist has worked so effectively, and now he's just beating away at this tower. It's not doing anything, but you know what? He just wants to feel pretty cool right now. The Luna buys back into the game, does have level 3 Eclipse at this point, so just got... I think that's actually a really meaningful point there. He stayed down in that bottom lane and was able to get level 16 off of the back of that. Can they turn it into anything? In the end, though, Sonic Wave committed down onto Handskins. They're able to snowball forward, are going to do a good amount of damage onto Lou. They were able to kill up a lot of these creep waves. There's the Shallow Grave keeping Chessy alive a little bit longer, but the Eclipse is not really hitting onto anybody. And now the Earthshaker just able to walk away. Also, Mu not going to be able to be bursted down in that fight. Again, so many heroes so low on Archon. It's... It's a combination of complexity just don't quite have the damage and they're playing really well on Archon, getting heroes who are low out of the fight. I mean, when your team has blinks and four staffs up the wazoo, 
you're just able to have this type of mobility. But I mean, complexity is really getting close to it. And I feel like Alcon, if they make a mistake here, maybe complexity has a bit of a window, but it is rough. And I think that unfortunately, the game is no longer quite in complexity's control from the standpoint of they need to rely on Alcon to make a few mistakes. Even if, you know, they got the next smoke gank is fantastic. They still maybe need some mistakes out of Alcon. Well, and the other thing here is that that was a buyback for Chessie. So, like, they needed that to be able to sort of keep the team fight even close to being able to be even. And I, now that you're seeing Alchemist start to give away this, you know, net worth to the rest of his team, obviously there aren't the best other Aghanim Scepter holders in this game. Earthshaker is probably the next best, I would imagine. I mean, it, you could make the argument that it would be decent to be able to give to Slardar just for the stats off the back of it to keep him alive and make sure that he finds the initiation that he wants. But I, it's, yeah, it's probably something where, as you said, you're, you're not doing it unless you're deciding, hey guys, it's time to stat up. And this Roshan, let's see, oh, it's not even, okay, I thought this Roshan would be much faster. But of course, even with all the amp damage and so on, there we go, with the acid spray falling a bit faster. Power treads on the ground. Who needs those boots? I have boots of travel now. They have cheese on the ground. Um, I, <laughs> I really don't think there's any way that uh, Complexity can win this next engagement with currently only a buyback on the Shadow Fiend. They, they need multiple buybacks to be able to take any type of engagement at this point. Definitely, again, though, if there's a little bit of uh, bad positioning, we've seen a few of these ice shards kind of trap people in. And of course, if someone is being healed up, it, oh goodness, slithering crush going in, monkeys forever. He's going to take a bit of damage, but limp, they forced off outside of the sonic wave. Doesn't matter. They commit the echo slam as well, and that is going to be one buyback force. And now they're going in for more hand skin, taking a lot of damage immediately, is put in the snowball. Has this elf overextended? Does he care, though? He has an Aegis, and there's no shallow grave coming out to save the Luna. He's going to be the buyback from limp. He just needs to auto attack down Mu, but instead he is cold and braced and there's nothing it feels like Limp can do. May as well just Requiem of Souls while he's around, but of course that is first life and they just decide to call good game. And so that's going to be it. Limp's going to just hang around, pop that Requiem of Souls, but we are on to a game three. Absolutely spectacular showing by Archon. This is what I was expecting out of them for game one. We saw this Alchemist strat work for them in two consecutive games yesterday against Elite Wolves. It seems to be their comfort zone, at least at this point in time. And Alchemist showing that he's still an incredibly powerful hero. Didn't get played a ton, I want to say, at the Frankfurt Major. I'm having trouble remembering all of it. There were a couple of very signature games, but uh, this time 9-0 and and 13 on the Alchemist. Yeah. 798 gold per minute. What more could you ask? Llama, are we going to see an Alchemist ban in the next game, or is it going to be building the rest of their draft to uh, counter it instead? Yeah, I think potentially an Alchemist ban, or at least not the shenanigans that we saw where Limp had such a rough time. I feel like a lot of this was Limp had a rough time in mid because he didn't maybe get the support or rotations. Shadow Demon not doing enough work. So I would be comfortable with a Shadow, uh, with an Alchemist ban and... I'm really excited to see, and I hope the third game is a nice even game to match out these two, a bit one-sided ones. Absolutely. We'll stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back in a second.